Hi and welcome. My name is Rafael Taubinger and this video is about getting started with RV64 Risk 5 course and the RV64 base instruction set in IR Embedded Workbench. I will show you what settings are required to start your first 64-bit Risk 5 project, including the core selection, the linker configuration, debug setup, and more. The version 3.10 added support for 64-bit cores, RV64, and also various devices from NDIS, CUDASIP, Microchip, Nuclei, and sci -Fi. There are also new RV32 devices, or Radar IP, in, and the full list is being displayed on the screen for you. Before I go into the practical part, it's worth to mention some of the extended capabilities and improvements from IR Embedded Workbench for Risk v in the latest versions. We have now uh, the library support for C++ 17 language standard. So the toolset now includes a new C++ library named Leap C++ that supports C++ 17 library features in full. The debugger received enhancements to support RV64 cores in the simulator and hardware, and also SMP multi-core debug support in iJet. This means it's now possible to connect to and debug an SMP multi-core RISC-V CPUs on various devices. Additionally, when it comes to debug drivers, GDB server support has been added that can be used for connecting to JLink GDB server running on a remote or local computer. And uh, there is a simplified driver uh, support enabling customers and partners to create debug drivers for unsupporting debug uh, probes. From the IDE perspective, there are also editor enhancements with window color themes including dark mode and syntax feedback with instant syntax suggestions while typing. This can of course be handy for improving productivity. Finally, when it comes to automated workflows, there are also the cross-platform IR build tools available as a separated solution supporting Ubuntu, Red Hat and Windows. So, let's move into practice so I can show you how all this comes together with 64-bit RISC-V cores. So, I have here IR Embedded Workbench for RISC-V open. And uh, the first screen that you can see is actually the IR Information Center. And uh, this is actually a good point to start because here you can find user guides, uh, even some uh, example projects and uh, we of course support many devices and examples here out of the box so that's a good reference and additionally of course uh, you can get access to release nodes or any integrated solutions and finally my pages where you can find the latest versions if you have a license and uh, are registered. Uh, in this case, uh, I have here this basic uh, project open and I want to show you uh, what do you need to cover to make sure that you can get started with a 64-bit RISC-V core uh, application. And um, first of all, you might have noticed right now that um, the ID looks a bit different. And um, we added uh, here under tool options uh, the option to select uh, color team so you can of course stay on the default one that we already know probably classic uh, high contrast dark mode that i have uh, selected here there is even this solarized one and uh, color accessibility available so let's stay on the dark mode that's what i want to use additionally some additional hints here that i can give you if you want to have code completion uh, enabled and so on that's actually under the editor options, but we will stay in this default settings here. Good. Um, as I said, I have a very basic project open here. And the first um, step here, what we need to do is to go to the project options. And um, once I go here to the options, we will see that um, we have the chance to select a device. Um, today I'm using here a microchip polar file SOC. Uh, that's actually populated um, with um, one um, sci 5 U51 and four uh, sci 5 U54 uh, cores. 
but for all of them are actually uh, RV64, uh, so 64-bit uh, cores. And uh, of course, if you select a device, and uh, I can show you the list here, uh, we have uh, many vendors that uh, we, we support here, uh, but you could even stay on the generic one, for example. Uh, but the list is of course growing here and we are adding more and more devices. If I just select uh, the generic one, you'll see that you even have to change to modify some of the standard extensions. I mean, uh, the multiply extension, atomic extension, uh, compressed uh, instructions, that's all of course uh, adjustable here if you need to do that. And uh, additionally, uh, you could even manipulate here the code generation, what code model you want to use, MATLAB, MATANY, it will depend on how much memory you want to address here. And as I mentioned before, uh, we added, uh, before we mainly had C++14 support in the compiler, uh, and C++17 of course also, uh, but in the libraries it was still C++14 and this changed now. We have lib C++ that um, is the complete C++17 runtime library that you can uh, select in the IDE and that's of course connected to the compiler uh, whereas I mentioned we support C++17 uh, um, since uh, previous uh, versions also. And talking about the compiler um, you can of course uh, select what level of optimization you want to have are you focusing on code size or performance? Most of the time 64-bit cores focus a lot on performance. So you can customize it or tune your application the way you want. So the options are available here and the compiler will of course do the best out of it. Um, I also mentioned that for debugging uh, you need to select a driver and uh, that can be of course a simulator if you don't have the hardware yet and that's very handy. Uh, but we also support the IR probe, the iJet, and um, initially GDB server if you want to connect, for example, to uh, JLink uh, GDB. Uh, and also, finally, the third party driver if you want to create your own driver, for example. Uh, before I close here in this menu, uh, I also need to say that once you select a device by uh, default, uh, the linker will uh, provide you a recommended. ICF, that's the linker file with the memory ranges. And uh, from here, uh, you can of course do some customizations, add some memory if you're uh, addressing external memory, for example. But um, we already provide you one file that can be then adjusted. If you just close this here and maybe focus on what it means, uh, the linker file, and for the Polar fire here, and uh, we of course have this uh, ready or suggested for use already. And as you can see, we have uh, the areas all defined here, and uh, that should be enough for you to get started here. Yeah. So first step is of course uh, to do the settings as I mentioned, the core, making sure that uh, the right core or device is selected. Uh, then you have a linker file and uh, the debug driver. And from here, of course, you can just make this project, just build it, it's up to date, uh, that's uh, good. And um, as I said, I will start here by connecting to the simulator. And if I start a download here, once we enter into the debug session, we will stop here at main. And uh, as you can maybe see, I already have some uh, windows already open here. Um, and uh, if you want to have more options, of course, if you go under view here, you will have the option to have a look, for example, on stack that I will open here. Uh, we can also open a few extra windows here for us, for example, even memory, so we can look inside the device. And we could even open here the registers uh, that uh, we want to check here. So we can really look inside the device um, we have different groups here. Of course, you could even toggle LED here, uh, for example, if you know exactly the right register to access, so you have full access. Uh, if it comes to the memory window, if we just add a symbol here and I search for it, we'll find the address here. If we have another symbol or variable, you can just drag and drop it here too. So it's taking you directly uh, to that area. 
and uh, the stack is still uh, in the beginning but if I start to step in here you will see that uh, the stack is growing and that's very handy to of course investigate uh, any uh, debug um, or let's say runtime uh, stack overflow and so on so as you can see very handy very helpful you have full control and uh, the best actually here also is that um, it gives you the possibility uh, to have a timeline if you go to the simulator here and I open uh, the timeline uh, I can just make sure that I find a good spot here to add uh, this window and maybe just find uh, the right spot here so this application is very simple as I said uh, it's just calculating Fibonacci if I leave it running here uh, probably also a good idea to just set a breakpoint here uh, at the end of the application so it stops on the right point so I'll just press run here and as you can see in the terminal I.O we have uh, the results being printed out but uh, the best here is actually also that you can have a graphical call stack and uh, you can know exactly what's happening uh, how long every uh, function call is uh, taking as you can see so this is of course really uh, powerful so you have full control you can generate the best optimized code uh, for 64 bits but also uh, do uh, the debugging have here full control uh, this was of course done all um, on uh, the simulator uh, but uh, the same of course uh, applies uh, to doing um, the programming debugging to the target and that's of course uh, very uh, easy to change here if I just change the debugger here to iJet and I have the IR iJet uh, connected here uh, it will definitely start the download and connect to the polar um, uh, fire sock uh, board here with uh, the RV64 uh, cores uh, the part number is being displayed um, on the screen right now so if you want to repeat the same process and once I confirm here I will just do the same process and uh, download and connect to the target and from here we landed at main and uh, like previously uh, we already have the terminal IO window open here you could even step here um, on assembly uh, for example you can set breakpoints at any point uh, you can do the same here if you just double click um, and if I leave this running on target of course you will see uh, it will behave exactly the same uh, stop on that breakpoint it's printing out information using this terminal IO implementation that's of course coming back through the debug probe very handy um, since we have here um, four uh, cores in uh, SMP mode I might be willing to show you that too really quickly here because that brings of course extra functionality here that's really uh, powerful so I have been mainly using one core here to make it easier on the demonstration but if I select the four um, uh, U54 uh, cores that I want to connect uh, it's exactly uh, the same of course there are some uh, good ways to split your application so uh, you can figure out which parts of the code are running in which core um, you can do that by accessing the right uh, registers for uh, RV64 it's usually CSR register but uh, that's uh, all available if you look on the intrinsics.h file so you can do that so now that uh, I'm connecting uh, to the target here uh, you will see uh, that some other menus are uh, available here so we have actually the four cores here maybe I should just open here view uh, cores that makes it uh, a bit more simple here to understand what uh, we are having here so of course uh, what you can do here we are on the first uh, core here uh, we could for example leave that one running but if I change the focus here maybe I can just leave that first core running and it of course stopped on the breakpoint no problem but I could just focus on the additional cores and as you can see it's still uh, on the beginning here uh, on the startup but we could leave that core uh, uh, running too so then it will of course stop there too um, if I remove uh, the breakpoint and focus on the additional cores uh, we could just make sure that this one starts running it's always the core that it's on focus that um, you will control over the top here but I can just leave it running 
and maybe if I want to stop all of them you can stop all the cores uh, you can of course run all of them if you want so this is of course very handy very powerful uh, you have full control on all the individual cores so when developing your application um, here for RV64 cores the IRM Abbott Workbench of course makes this way easier Great! As you can see, IRM Avid Workbench for RISC-V is for sure an excellent choice for your next project with 64-bit RISC-V cores. It provides you an outstanding compiler with full control on debugging, including multi-core scenarios. If you are migrating code to RV64 cores, the code quality tools can accelerate the process too. Make sure to start your trial now. Just access ir.com slash RISC-V uh, for more details on how to get access to the evaluation version. Uh, we are also displaying the link on the screen on how to get direct access. Thank you so much for your time and I hope to see you soon again.